problems seemed almost contagious. Someone's playing games. People are capable of nasty impulses. There's something in this house that hates us. You do not belong here. Oh yes, there'll be tricks tonight. Stop! Stop! What happened next? This is a mystery to me. Hello once again watchers of good movies, my name is Nick Pell and this is my review of The Little Stranger. Now I'm going to be honest, I had no knowledge of what the film was going to be really before I went to see it. I had not seen any sort of trailer that I can remember at least and so I knew who was in the film. I knew a very very general premise of it because like through IMDB um, and that's about it and I knew that it had decent reviews on Rotten Tomatoes so I'm like hey, this is a horror-esque film, so let's go check this thing out. So uh, let's talk about The Little Stranger. The general premise of this film is that we have Donald Gleason. He plays a guy named Dr. Faraday. He ends up becoming a partner of a doctor who is uh, working in the outskirts of Britain somewhere. We don't really know where. We don't really know when the film is set necessarily. It's sometime in the, I want to say, mid 1900 somewhere around there and he ends up becoming acquainted with this family that lives in this old mansion he was there once as a child his mother used to work there as a maid and so he has this connection to the house but not to any of its residents but eventually he ends up treating uh will poulter's character for a burn on his leg and just to help him walk better and after treating one of its residents he begins to form a connection with ruth wilson's character caroline and as the film progresses it becomes more and more evident that there is some sort of entity present within the house and uh, Donald Gleason's character Dr. Faraday being a man of science he just adamantly rejects these this idea that there's some sort of ghost or spirit or entity in this house and yet based on scenes that we see it becomes all the more evident that that is the case. Donald Gleason and Ruth Wilson they easily spend the most on-screen time together and I thought that their chemistry on screen actually worked quite well um, because you get to see kind of the relationship develop you get to see her as kind of this homebody of sorts. She just kind of stays in this giant mansion of hers. And yet we have Donald Gleason. She becomes infatuated with him. He with her. And uh, you just can see this relationship progress. And it actually works out quite well on screen. I was also really interested in Dr. Faraday as a character because you start out obviously rooting for the guy. He's this guy um, kind of like um, Jason Clark's character in uh, Winchester earlier this year. And uh, where he's kind of this newcomer, this scientist of sorts, uh, in this house which is haunted. Um, and he becomes associated with this family. And so um, you, you are rooting for him throughout the first half of the film, but then he kind of turns into an asshole at times. And this is again primarily in the way that he is interacting with Ruth Wilson's Caroline character because the closer that they get, the more he's starting to kind of reject what she's saying and try to kind of manage her per se and I mean it fits with the time period as far as I, I'm aware but it was still kind of something tough to watch because you start out like I said rooting for the guy and then he just has these qualities to him which you can't really associate with or really like. The film is also quite a slow burn however uh, because it is part drama and also part horror mystery because uh, the first I want to say at least 45 minutes of the film is pretty much just all drawn. We have Donald Gleason's character, he comes to the house and we get to just learn about this family, their history, his history with them, and things of that sort. And so we get to learn about these characters and they're usually the high point of the movie. That said, the fact that it is such a slow burn of a film is probably going to throw some people off who like genuine horror films. That being said, once the horror elements start to take place, and they are kind of far and few between, but they work really, really well when they take place because there's just this heightened level of tension and anxiety, and once they do like these horror elements, they work really, really well. And it almost feels like there's horror elements in this drama film. And it just, as the film kind of goes back and forth between these things, it just flows very, very naturally. And it never really felt out of place per se. And I like that focus more on this drama focus because we really got to learn about these characters and really care about them when bad things started to happen to them. The music in the film also helps to elevate those scenes quite a lot along with other scenes throughout the movie. It's kind of used here and there 
A lot of the scenes are very, very quiet scenes. They don't really use the music as much, but when, when it is utilized very effectively, it is done really, really well. And I really enjoyed seeing that aspect kind of combined with the horror elements really, really effectively. Another thing which I really enjoyed about the film is that there is no physical vision of the entity in this film. You never know really who it is, what it is, anything like that, because you kind of, you see that there is something there, presumably, but you never really see what it is. You never see like a, a spirit floating behind somebody or anything like that. Um, and so it really made that really effective because you almost kind of wonder, is everything that's happening actually going on inside their heads or is there actually some sort of presence here in the house? That being said, I would have actually kind of liked to have some sort of explanation as to kind of why this entity, whoever it may end up being, um, is basically haunting this family and causing them problems. It would have provided a nice sense of clarity to the film. Um, and it, it was fine as it was, but I would have just liked to see a little bit more re resolution in that aspect. The film also makes really good use of its R rating. It's not really focused on um, language or anything of that aspect. It's focused on the blood use. And again, while it is few and far between, when it does decide to invoke its horror elements, it does it really, really effectively. We have um, mangled little girls. We have... Um, just blood in on bed sheets and I don't really want to spoil too much but um, it it uses it really effectively and not like you would be able to do with a with like a PG-13 horror film. Last little minor issue which I kind of had and which I think other people are possibly going to have is that the ending can be a little bit confusing um, especially the last scene that we see in the film just because it kind of invokes something and it was kind of uh, calling back to something that I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind when I was watching the film But again, there's no really sense of clarification as to what was actually going on or what that last scene is necessarily supposed to represent I don't know if it's clarified in the book more so um, But I just kind of wish it again if the film would have been a little bit more transparent with um the entity itself and what was actually going on in regards to the hauntings. But guys, overall, The Little Stranger was a pleasant surprise for me. Again, I didn't really know what, I, what to expect going into it. I saw no trailer that I can remember, and it ended up being a quite effective horror film. Again, it has a lot of elements of drama to it, and I thought that Donald Gleason and Ruth Wilson's characters really were the highlight of that aspect because of how good their performances were and how interesting their relationship ended up being. And the horror elements themselves, uh, when they were invoked, actually were very, very effective because you never really knew what was going to happen. Well, also like I mentioned, uh, the film can be a slow burn um, getting to those horror elements. Uh, and the ending can be a little bit confusing without any sort of explanation to what this entity is or why it's attacking this family or things of that sort. But guys, those are my thoughts on The Little Stranger. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair, comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you such use, I appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Pell. And once again, keep on watching.